The Kentucky Nursery Landscape Integrated Pest Management Interviews are sponsored by Kentucky Integrated Pest Management from a USDA NIFA grant. The interviews cover plant production, pests, and shared information from industry leaders. This edition is an interview with Jacob Stidman, Nursery Manager at Udell Gardens in Crestwood, Kentucky. I'm here at Udell Gardens speaking with Jacob Stedman, who is the nursery manager here, and there's a lot going on. This week, they put on Facebook a covering of their new greenhouse, and he's planning on producing a lot of plants and bringing in plants. But let's start out by asking Jacob, how did you get involved in horticulture in the first place? Well, first, Wynn, I really appreciate you coming up here and thinking about Udell and myself to do this. Uh, It's a long question, no simple answer. I can't really go back and say... I woke up one day and wanted to be nursery manager or greenhouse guy. Ever since I was a little kid, growing up uh, with my mom and dad and grandparents having a garden, there was a pair of pruners or a handsaw laying around during the summer. There wasn't a limb that I could touch, so I kept everything trimmed and looking good. So I've really always enjoyed seeing a planting a seed or trimming a tree, and in high school, started working for a feed store and archery shop there in Charlestown with Chris and Lisa Jones. Then pulled up one day before I even had my license and he had pansies out front. What in the world does he have pansies out front now? So that turned into selling more plants that spring. I think it was that next year we put up his first two greenhouses. That was the first time I worked inside of one. That was all through high school. Then I always liked science and math. I was going to go up to Purdue University and be an engineer and make big money. So I went up there and I absolutely hated that for the whole year and knew I wanted to get out and switch to horticulture. Came out of there with a horticulture degree, a fiance that also had the same degree as I did. And it kind of built from there. Came out of school, worked for a hydroponic greenhouse for a little over two years, then went down to Frankfort, Kentucky and worked at Wilson Nurseries Mm -hmm. in their production greenhouses as an annual grower. Came up to retail, was there for about four years at Wilson's. And then came here to Udell last January. So it's been a long, fun, very diverse road, but wouldn't change it for anything. Okay, well, I was, uh, I'm was i noting, oh, we have a fan in the background. We're actually doing this podcast or this presentation or this recording in Udell's uh, glass house, one-sided glass house with the, what do you call it, the uh, green living roof on yep. the north side. It's a little fan that circulates the air in the background. I may be able to get that out, but if I don't, I hope it won't distract. Too much. But uh, that's kind of weird because that's the same way I did. I thought I was going to be an engineer, so I went oh. to civil engineering and then yep. uh, ended up at Farmingdale on Long Island to get a degree in nursery management because I'd worked in the nursery landscape industry as a teenager. And so same deal. I knew it, and so therefore I felt more comfortable in that area. The geometry was stressing me out. So uh, anyway, since you've come to Udell, what are some of the things that have interested you? and some of the things that you and Paul, the director, have talked about and some of the other. I know there's a lot of input from a lot of different people around here, not just the employees at the facility, but also the volunteers. Where are you headed from? Well, let's let's start out. Where did you start when you and Paul first talked? Well, I interviewed. Uh, then he called me back and offered me a position. Talked to Emma, that's my wife, and decided to go ahead and Give him a call back and accept the position. Gave my notice down at Wilson's, and that was right before Christmas or November, I guess. So I started here the middle of January, which is a really good time of the year, I think, to start sure, into this kind of bad. position instead of right now on the first day of spring. So I came in and uh, I said, well, Paul, what do I do? And we kind of went from there. They had secured the funding to expand our nursery operation here. So I was brought on to kind of help spearhead that and get that going and they had always done some growing and piddling around and growing some plants for the annual plant sale in the spring and they had some material overwintering in a house so i just kind of started digging in and seeing what was here and just kind of getting to know everybody that works here and like i said it was january so i had the time to kind of slowly step into it and it's really sped up since then (laughs) yeah yeah, by the way, we're, we interrupted his uh, hooking up a new heating uh, system to uh, uh, automatically operate some vents and some uh, fans, and, and the heating system has gas and is ready to go. So we thank him for taking his time to uh, check in with us. But I, 
I've seen you several times at plant propagator meetings. Are you planning on propagating some of these plants yourself? Yeah, absolutely. And we've already started that last year. Uh, we had uh, one hoop house that we ended up putting a heater in in December for some minimum heat. But then there's a high tunnel out here that we were able to put some plants in. And then the greenhouse we're sitting in now, it works really well as a propagation house for cuttings and seed and things like that. So we really did kind of maximize the space that we had last year going into the summer and the fall with some divisions out of the garden and some woody cuttings that we had taken. The new houses that we're putting up this year is really going to let us really explode into a lot more area and a lot more plants to grow for ourselves here at the garden and for our plant sales and maybe starting to tap into some wholesale mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. customers. Well, the reason I'm interested in there's a there's a couple of natives. Uh, there's a lot of natives out there that are grown from seed because you can collect seed. But there's a couple of natives that are really difficult. The seed is either excruciatingly small or uh, in, in some cases, some of the impatience family, it just explodes and disappears. Mm -hmm. So I might bring some plants up for you to do a little research project with us. Uh, in particular, there is a native plant called Dittany, Cunilla, um, or Aganoides, that uh would make a beautiful plant but it has to be grown in full sun in nature you know it grows in the wild and it's just kind of a weedy mint square stems kind of semi woody and a bloom over here and a bloom over there and that's about the extent of it but if you move it into a landscape a sunny landscape bed it creates this wonderful little rounded plant but i haven't figured out other than dividing it and coming up with a couple of plants how to propagate it but it is a mint so you should be able to just take cuttings in the summertime and maybe even spit on them and get them to root uh so i was thinking i have plants i may bring some plants up here and see if you can root them and we'll share a little research project with you dale in uk yeah absolutely uh, and i'm glad you brought up the research and kind of the experimenting side of it and that really fits in with our mission here at udell is is trying new plants and finding what's going to work well in this area to get new plants into the market for our visitors that come here and in anywhere here in the Louisville metro, because there's a lot of plants out there that are not in the market oh, that sure. need to be in the market. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I was looking through a few weeks ago Pat Harrigan's book that she wrote of <laughs> Olmstead Gardens, you know, the plants that occur in the, in the Olmstead Gardens or Olmstead uh, plantings. And there's a lot of wonderful uh, natives that that she has listed as occurring in the in Cherokee and Seneca parks that would be great as landscape plants, but you very rarely see them. So if you were able to propagate them and bump up the numbers, and in that she knows where they are, it's always <laughs> helpful to have somebody who knows where they are. And and one thing that we started doing last year was acquiring a large portion of Gene Bush's nursery from a Dupont and a munchkin nursery um, yeah, yeah had a huge shade garden nursery and just starting to retire so paul worked out to purchase some of his ground beds up there and we've been digging and bringing it back started a lot of seed last year lots of erisemas some shredded umbrellas that are starting to come up in the greenhouse we're going to start adding some of those into to our plant sale mix and sure uh, for those who don't know gene bush he actually has a book online that you might look into on shade gardening. And it's he's done a wonderful job, kind of until he retired or whatever and started giving a few talks. Nobody even knew Munchkin Nursery was there, and he went out and gave a few talks. And, of course, now I know his, he has some health issues and other things going on. But, but yeah, he's got a great little... I'm glad, I'm glad you were able to save that because so often those kinds of private gardens that are so spectacular are lost to us and then when somebody tries to say okay well let's preserve it get up some money and save it then you don't have the plant <laughs> material that was there so and you read through its journals and yeah. his garden books and it's long gone so. and it's been an absolute pleasure to meet him in the last year and get to know him he's taught me a lot of technical terms and like, mm, and, uh, and that's what he calls technical terms. Uh, we were actually up there last Wednesday, I believe it was, and did another uh, dig. And I'm actually looking out the door here at a crate of epimediums we dug. So we dug two big patches of epimediums, and we dug some partridge berry. He gave me a little piece oh, of that excellent. out of his personal garden. 
Uh, so don't think he's letting us take shovels into his personal <laughs> side of it. Yeah, he I makes like us leave the shovels plan. at the edge. I'm glad you're going to produce some of that. I would like to have one of those just uh, for my own little shade garden. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in what Gene's done because, as you may have been aware, we had an ice storm that turned all our trees into semi-umbrellas. So they broke them off and they suckered out in the top. So I went from about 50% shade to about 100% shade. So now I'm searching dramatically for trying to find shade plants where before I actually had roses and stuff. Forget about those. So. And Paul and I were talking, I guess it was towards the end of last year, about the direction we'll take the nursery. And since we've been able to acquire so much stock plant off of Gene, we will be heavy in shade perennials. And there's not that many shade perennials out there if you take the hostas and ferns off the shelves at garden sure, centers. Sure, Yeah, that's, uh, it's a very difficult arena. I mean, I know that Tony Nold occasionally has some Procumbent, Pachysandra procumbens and a few other shade type plants that he uses as ground covers and stuff. But some of the native wild gingers and some of the mm-hmm. other plants, plants that do fairly well in shade, trilliums, there's a lot of plants that uh, you don't see that frequently. Well, because they're a little more difficult to grow, which you have the opportunity from what I've seen out here. To... We've got the space, we've got the desire, and we're going to do it. Good. And it's going to be a really fun, fun journey to to take here at Udell. One thing I'm going through right now is I've spent so much time on retail horticulture. Today's the first day of spring and everybody's gearing up and it all peaks right there at Mother's Day weekend when everybody comes in and buys their hanging basket of whey petunias and their three gallon red geranium with a spike. So trying to find the market for a trillium or the market for a shredded umbrella Uh because you're never going to have someone come in and like, oh, trilliums, I want 25 of those to plant in mass Uh and right now i'm kind of looking at it as a spark plant and Mm -hmm. what i mean by that is is one of those plants to get someone excited about horticulture or excited about gardening so a shredded umbrella plant i think we've got 120 some of those out there that we started last year and we're not going to sell all of those Uh, we're going to plant a good mess of them in a ground bed to propagate off of Uh, but then some of the erisimas people love a a jack in the pulpit oh yeah yeah they're used to seeing them when they were out in the woods when they were a kid or even when they're an adult you don't see those kind of things at a garden center sure um you know mostly mail order and things like that but it's going to be fun to try to get those unusual plants in there and hopefully spark the interest i always tell people my spark plant was a a dog tick i call it you know a dog tick is yes castor bean (laughs) mole bean so my grandma and my dad's mom and dad lived across the street from me when I was a kid so my grandma watched me during the summer and after school and they came out of eastern Kentucky down in Letcher County Whitesburg so where you had to grow a garden down there just to pretty much make it yeah when they were growing up so that going back to what got me into it definitely a lot there but she always would plant the dog ticks and I remember being a little kid you know five six seven years old and I'd go and I'd karate chop the old yellow leaves off the base of it that's the kind of thing I like to see here, uh-huh. and, and hopefully we can some of these plants that we're growing. Uh, well, I'm ex- turn people I, I, on. I'm actually excited about it. I myself am getting older, and I now find a lot of my friends I have limited abilities. Even people who are very active in their youth um, now no longer can go hike into the woods to see a jack in the pulpit or a green dragon or any of the wild gingers or even all the violas my gosh how many of those are there and so difficult now to have access and here we have the garden and it has paths and it has walkways and it's available for wheelchairs and things like that so if you're planting out some of these materials that you get from gene in addition to the beautiful hellebores right now and all the other things you have growing it would be a wonderful place for a lot of people especially those who've never actually seen those plants i mean some people actually the first time they ever see a jack in the pulpit is at uh, longwood or somewhere like that so here we are right in the louisville area um and have that available i'm pretty excited about increasing the diversity at udell to the nurseries and allowing you to actively participate in what appears to be from what i understand from uh, several of the native plant nurseries in the state a logarithmic jump in interest in native plants and actually buying native plants and putting them into people's gardens 
So you seeing that here as well with your plant sales and yeah, and for those of you who haven't been to Udell, property was kind of started back in the 1940s by Theodore and Martha Lee Klein is an operational field nursery, lots of ewes and hollies, operational farm. He started planting a lot of gardens in the Arboretum in the 60s and 70s after he kind of semi-retired from the nursery business. So we got a lot of older plants here that really got this garden off to a good start. And Paul's done a great job of getting in some of those more weird plants. So we don't really have a display garden per se mm -hmm. as some gardens would where they plant annuals in april and then they rip them out in the fall so it's a very diverse diverse planting that progresses day to day week to sure. week and it's neat to see the people that are really a big plant geek or know something about plants and they can really look into the detail more mm -hmm. than just seeing sure. trees and grass well jacob i think um i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up but as we uh, progress, of course, I have to have a talk with Paul at some point in time. But as you progress, we're just getting started. As you said, January. We'll uh, come by and do it again and see where you moved from where you were last time. Hopefully uh, ahead and we'll have new <laughs> I'm plans. I'm confident of it. Tomorrow. The change since you've been here is, is very dramatic. And also getting to see you and Paul and others at the, at the meetings, both regional and national, has given a higher profile for UDEL out and about. We're very pleased, and I really appreciate you taking the time this afternoon, considering there was uh, tr utility trucks and contractor trucks, and there's a little dozer park down there, and all kinds of activity going on today. And it is a sunny, beautiful day to get some work done. So we'll let you get back to it, and thank you very much. No, more than welcome to do it, and glad you could come by, and look forward to seeing you again. Okay. Well, hope this came out. Talk to you later. Bye. We plan to have Jacob back again in the future for an update on the trials and tribulations of growing unusual and rare plants for Udell's fundraising plant sales.